All right, one more video that has to do with the basics of conditions. In this video, we're just going to take a quick look at how you can test for two or more conditions in the same line. And then we're also going to look at something called nested uh, if statements. Uh, easier just to show you. You'll see here I've started out just with a new little class. I'm asking them for a number and a number. This is basically the idea here. I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say if a equals 7, and b equals 7, then system out, print line, both are lucky. Now, I mean, it sort of reads like it does. This symbol right here, okay, which is the new part, that stands for and. Now, and means exactly what it means in the English language. It means and. If a equals 7 and at the same time b equals 7, then you get to run this code. So the key here is that both of these conditions have to be true. So if you just have a equal to 7 and b equals 1,000, this is not going to run. Okay, So that's one of the ones you can do. Another one you can do is I could say if a is 7 or b is 7, system out print line one or both are lucky now this or symbol first of all if you find it on your keyboard it's usually very close to the enter key and it's shift slash so if you find the backslash just go shift backslash and yes you have to do two of them and when you do this one the two of them represents or now, or means exactly what it means in the English language. So if A is 7 or the B is 7, then you have to do the code. Now, even if one of them is 7, the code's going to run. If both of them are 7, the code is going to run. If neither of them are 7, code won't run. Okay, so this is how you can string together uh, multiple conditions in the one statement. If you actually had some other variables, well, I'll just fiddle with this one here, you could actually add more here. You could say and. Oh, I guess I can't really add and there, but let's say I had, let me do it this way, or C is greater than 100. I mean, you go, now I have three conditions there. I know I don't have the variable C yet, but just pretend we did. You can have as many as you want tagging in this if statement, right? They can get quite long. Now, one other thing you can do, um, this is obviously neat and tidy to check two things at once, is you can do something called nested if statements. Now, you're going to probably see in your practice problems, you'll use a couple nested if statements, but here's an example of what a nested if statement is. If I go if a equals 7, do the following block of code. Remember with these if statements, right? Now it's going to go in here and do whatever I place in here, only if a is 7. But if in here I put another if statement, if b is 7, system out print line, both are lucky. If you think about the logic here, even though this looks different, to get to this line, both of these statements have to be true. So if a is 7 gets you inside, and then once you're inside, there's another if. If b is 7, do this. And so you can see here, I prefer this. It looks good. But we have to show you that you are allowed to do this. And there's going to be lots of cases in your coding where you want to have an if statement in an if statement. And you're going to see that in the practice problems. Um, hopefully you'll figure out, oh, this would be good to do this. Now that being said, you can often do this when you do this. Okay, it just depends on your program. So that's using and, that's using or, and that's your nested condition. I guess one thing I might add here, just a little extra, is a lot of students try to do this, which doesn't work. They try to go, if a equals 1 or 2 or 3, then run some code. All right, you put some code there. 
This looks good, and I know it makes sense to uh, the beginner, but you can't do this. To properly do this chunk of code, the number one, two, or three, you actually have to phrase it like this in the code. You'd have to go if a equals one, or a equals two, or a equals three. Do the code. Okay, that would work. Okay, if I actually have some code there. And so that's one way you could do it. The other way you can do it is you could say if a is greater or equal to one and a is less than or equal to three, do some code. Because now it makes sure it's bigger than one and at the same time it's less than three. So now you've got a range. Imagine the time that saves if you want a number between the range one to 30. Okay, that's pretty quick. Right? You don't want to do a whole bunch of ORs for every single number. So that's another common one you're going to probably see in the problems. So have fun with this. Not too bad. You know, these are the basics of conditional statements, and that's enough to really get you up and going and doing quite a bit in your programs. Thanks for watching. Have fun with the practice problems.